Hi, my name is Alex with Revolution Yacht Experience. Welcome to another AXOPAR how-to video. In this video, we're gonna be discussing the VHF radio on your boat. We're gonna talk about the options uh, and what they mean, and we're gonna talk a little bit about what they do, and we're also gonna talk a little bit about how to get to the stations that you're looking for in, uh, in given circumstances. This is not a replacement for a proper VHF course. They are available, and we'll put a link below to some VHF courses that you can do. This is meant to be a, an overview for you. So come with us through this video as we show you how the VHF works. Okay, so as with most things that we do on the boat, uh, this does require power. This is a 12 volt boat. So we need to turn on the 12 volt service battery. And here is this switch right here. We just click that one on and that will power up the 12 volt system. Once that's powered up, we should be able to turn on the radio. Okay, so we've successfully powered up the boat. You can see the Simrad display is booting up behind me. And if we take a look down here at this VHF, we'll notice that it's not on. So to turn this on, all we need to do is press the power button and it should power right up. Maybe a little bit of a longer press is required here. There we go. So it'll boot up and it'll tell you what software version it's on. Uh, so we just need to give it a sec and away it goes. Um, in most cases, when you first receive your vessel, uh, or any new VHF for that matter, uh, if it's uh, capable of DSC, which is Digital Select Calling, we'll talk more about that in a minute, it'll probably give you this uh, error message um, that no MMSI is entered and the DSC is disabled. So an MMSI is basically a unique identifying number that you must apply for, and it really uh, links this, this VHF to your vessel and makes sure that when you make a, a call using digital select calling, that the person receiving that, or the station receiving that, has a way of identifying you digitally on the airwaves that are sent out. So as I said, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but it will tell you that on the screen. So for now we can just clear that. So this one's here, X equals back. So we just hit the back button and then we'll be into our main screen. You'll see that we've opened up on channel 16. Channel 16 is the international distress channel. Um, you will need to make sure that uh, channel 16 is only really used for two purposes. One is to, um, well I guess three. <laughs> uh, one is to um, uh, make a distress call, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well, or to be part of a um, distress call assistance mobilization, or if you want to establish communication with another vessel, you can do so on 16, but you must immediately move to another channel as soon as you have established communications with that other party. Okay, so from channel 16, most of your calls, I think, uh, in um, in general operation, will probably probably be hailing a marina when you come. That seems to be the most uh, common thing that people do with their VHF, and it's something, uh, at least here in the Pacific Northwest in Canada, that people will uh, will be required to do in order to get their slip assignment for the marina. Most marina staff uh, will operate on channel six six alpha so 66 alpha uh, you'll see that on a lot of websites or handouts or forms or emails that you get if you make a booking with your boat at a, at a marina if you're going to be a transient or have transient moorage they'll typically tell you what uh, what that channel is and it is almost always 66 alpha okay so let me interrupt my own video here with another piece of information and probably the most important thing that there is and that is how to make a call uh, we realized we went through this entire video and I neglected to make a live call uh, during the video to show you exactly how it works and how to test the capabilities of your VHF to make sure it does work. So when I do that here in this region, what I do is I call 83 Alpha. I will talk later in the video about those Alpha channels, so stand by for that. Um, and we will ask them to identify uh, that our system is working and uh, we will thank them for their services and then we will move back to channel 16. So come with me as I do a quick radio check on channel 83 Alpha, which is the Coast Guard. Okay, so from channel 16, we're gonna slide all the way up to channel 83 Alpha, which is the Coast Guard. So oh, that's 83, right? But we need to keep going to 1083, which is the Alpha channel. Okay, so here we are. Victoria Coast Guard, Victoria Coast Guard, Victoria Coast Guard. This is AXOPAR 28, AXOPAR 28, located at Cole Harbour Marina, downtown Vancouver, 
Requesting a radio check on channel 83 Alpha over. Station requesting a radio check. This is Victoria Coast Guard Radio. I'm reading you strength 3 out of 5 and readability 4 out of 5 from West Vancouver. West Vancouver Coast Guard Station, thank you for that. Um, this is Axopar 28 out. Okay, so as you can see, it's fairly simple, and there's always someone out there on the Coast Guard radio listening out for you. Um, you'll notice that they use terms like 3x5 and 4x5 and things like that. Uh, that's basically a rating on how well um, you are being uh, heard. So if you've ever heard the term loud and clear, so loud is uh, 5 by 5 essentially and um, uh, clear is well it's loud and clear is 5 by 5 so your loudness right is the first part of it and the clarity is the second part of it so if if it's 2 by 1 then it is not very loud and not very clear so your your strength of output um, and your antenna and the noise around you and how far you are where you are from things can all affect that stuff ultimately you're looking for a 5x5 five five, but as you can see with a with a 3x4 I think she says it was um, we would uh, essentially be uh, very capable of maintaining a conversation on the airwaves with uh, with a result like that so without further ado let's get back to the main video so let's talk about the alpha channels, the Bravo channels, and the standard channels for a moment. So right now, as you can see, we are on channel 16. 16 is a full-blown cha channel or station. Um, it is the same frequency no matter what frequency band that you're operating in. I'll return to those frequency bands in a moment. Um, but let's talk about how to get and traverse through the different stations. So on this um, handset here we do have a channel up and down button which will take us up through all of the main stations or the main numbers here right as we keep pressing up we keep going up with numbers another way to do it is directly on here and you can see if we spin this dial we keep going up now just take a really good look at these numbers and just see how they go from full numbers into the alpha channels See now how it says 10 5, 10 0, 5. That actually means 5 alpha. That is actually um, how to uh, distinguish this channel from channel 5. 5 alpha, so it's like a sub channel of channel 5 essentially. But what we're looking for is 66 alpha. So see now here we're on 10 66. Uh, sometimes it'll give you a little description of what it is, but 66 alpha looks just like that. If you are trying to be on channel 66 alpha or should I say try to hail someone on 66 alpha and you use this channel here you are close in frequency but unfortunately not close enough to actually maintain a good uh, conversation with sending and receiving the signals I have heard sometimes people you know getting a little bit of uh, you know a signal through here and there but it's very unreliable you really need to make sure that if you are in uh, you know a country in this case Canada that you are set to the Canadian frequency band and you are on the correct station or the correct alpha or Bravo channel as well you almost never use the Bravo channels but I'll talk about that now okay so let's keep going back up into the into the alphas and you'll see now we slide into the 10 series which is the alpha channels if we keep going up, it'll actually, the, the 10 will actually change into a 20, and then 20 means Bravo, so that would be a, uh, that's 20 Bravo, basically, that's, that's the name of that station. If we keep going up through those, we come all the way back to this uh, full-blown channel, which is channel 1, just 1, right? And then here's 16. You can always return back to 16 in a hurry by pressing 16, or by pressing uh, it again and you're back to 16 here okay so let's talk about some of the stuff that's on the screen here so we're going to notice that down the left hand side you have this volume bar right here so you can use the handset which is right here and use the volume controls and that will take it up and down okay so obviously that will um, control how loud this this speaker is here when you're listening in and then there's another very important uh, feature called squelch if you're not 
uh, aware of what squelch is, uh, you definitely should be, because it can make um, using the radio almost impossible if you haven't got your squelch set up right. So let's just press this button here. We click it in. It says volume, VOL, and SQL. SQL stands for squelch. So let's press this button in here, and we'll see that now the little indicator has moved from from the left side to the right side and squelch is now lit up with a little arrow that means we're in control of the squelch so squelch is basically its resistance to static essentially so the more static is there and that you don't want to hear the higher the squelch needs to be to cut this uh, the static out if you put your squelch all the way down on zero you will get background noise and here it comes there it is right so so squelch on zero means that the uh, the radio itself is not cutting out any of the background static. When we're talking about radio waves, that static is always there, right? So most radios do have the squelch feature so that you don't have to listen to that all day until someone makes a call. Typically what happens if you're close to a... Here we go. Okay, so right there you'll see that... Um, you know, the radio has picked up that we've got a bona fide signal coming in. Um, it, it discerns the difference between static and someone making a call, and it will, you know, give it to you to listen to, right? However, if we had our squelch turned up way too high, like this, we may not receive anything at all, because it's going to cut out almost everything apart from the most powerful signals that exist. So if you're finding that you're not receiving anything, have a double check and see where this squelch is at. The rule of thumb on how to set your squelch correctly, oops, now I've, here we go, is basically to just go down, 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 down until you hit static, and then come up one. Okay, so we go, and then the static goes away. That's where you want to be. Okay, so let it settle there for a bit. And if you find that uh, static keeps coming in and out again after you've made that setting, then you can do that again and just go one more level up. But never go any higher with your squelch than what you need to be. It's simply to cut out the background uh, noise, right, uh, that you don't want to hear when you're driving around. Okay, so that's how that works. The next thing I want to talk about are those frequency bands. As I said, we do set these up uh, for the Canadian vessels as we are in Canada right now. Um, but uh, if you're watching this video outside of Canada, then hopefully yours has been set up correctly uh, for the country that you are in. So let's take a quick look at this screen again, and we'll notice that up in the top right-hand corner, we have this little C-A-N up here. That basically is telling us that this particular radio is set to the Canadian frequency band. What does that really mean, Canadian frequency band? Well, what it means is that the channels that we have access to are custom to the channels that are in use in Canada. So sometimes there'll be channels in here that you don't get in the USA, and sometimes uh, there will be channels missing from here that you do get in the USA. And sometimes the channels themselves may have a slightly offset frequency uh, from other uh, areas in the world. But it basically means that this particular frequency band and each, um, each particular frequency that we tune to is very specific to all the radios that operate in this country. If this does not say Canada and you are in Canada, then you can actually change this quite simply. We simply come here where it says DSC and menu and we press and hold until we get to here. And then we go to radio setup and then we go down to UIC. UIC stands for USA, International and Canada. So you're going to have those three options when you open it up. See, there they are there. So you can choose from those three settings. Select what is right for you and make sure that's in there. And then if it wasn't already there, that little CAN will pop up here. Okay, so sensitivity. What does this mean? It basically means that the, um, the sensitivity of it picking stuff up is increased if you switch to distant versus local. So if you find that you're receiving uh, lots of stuff from outside of your local area that doesn't really apply to you, you can switch, excuse me, you can switch it to local setting um, and it will pass out some of that stuff. But I would say leave it on distance because that is uh, really where you want it to be. Uh, power output is how strong your signal is. 
it's typically um, calculated in wattage. So um, the radio will have a output watt rating at its maximum. And when you set to high, you're gonna be right on that output maximum. Um, but low will simply mean that you will not send your signal as far um, because you're not putting as much power behind the signal that you send out. So that's what that setting is there, okay? Right now, I think there's so many things we could go through in here and uh, to keep this video on the shorter side we will get out of that um, but there is another setting in here i want to talk about so um, we have alarms this is a really uh, important one to know as well sometimes uh, we have people complain of nuisance alarms uh, that uh, is making their radio go off over and over and over and over again so if we click on this and we open it up um, the one that seems to cause the most issues is this thing called a cpa alarm uh, this stands for closest point of approach. So because this radio is connected with your navigation system um, and it's also listening out for where other vessels are using AIS, which is the automatic identification system, which is uh, a way of using VHF radio waves to l locate and identify uh, the location of other vessels around you. So if there's other vessels in your vicinity, and especially in the marina that you're in, uh, the, the computer will think that you will, um, you're about to crash into them, even if everyone's sitting still. So the closest point of approach alarm is typically something we turn off, but if you are out in the open sea, um, you can maybe turn it back on again, and it will use uh, the smarts <laughs> that is programmed into the system to keep a lookout, basically, for any ship that is in your region that has IAS, AIS, that may be on a potential collision course with you. But we find that it causes more hassle um, leaving it on because it just goes off constantly at the dock because there's so many vessels that have AIS now that it will actually just alarm nonstop, essentially. So this is a good one just to turn off, but you should know how to turn it back on. And there it is. Okay. So uh, I did say earlier on in the video that I would discuss uh, a little bit more about DSC, which is Digital Select Calling. So when a radio wave is sent out or received, um, it now has a digital layer embedded in that. If anyone's seen the movie Contact, where they're receiving these, these digital signals inside of another signal, um, DSC is somewhat an analog to that. Uh, these these positions and uh, ship's name and size and things like that, your MMSI number, these are all inside of your broadcast that you make. So if you have DSC enabled, um, then when you make a call, anyone receiving that call with the technology to read the underlying digital information that's behind the audio in that signal, they will know basically uh, everything that you've put down. Um, in your digital select calling application or that you've programmed into your radio, should I say. So if that sounds like a feature that you're interested in, then you will need to go and apply for an MMSI number for your vessel and program all of that in. We will put a link to that down below, at least for this region where we are in Canada, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, if you would like to do it in another region, then you would need to consult your local authorities as to how to get that done. Okay, so I think that should wrap it up for today on how to use the VHF, uh, the VHF radio. Um, if you have any questions or would like to understand more about your VHF, please do not hesitate to reach out to Freedom Marine International Yacht Sales.